Did you know that a lot of food we love to eat is actually poisonous for dogs and cats? They may even be deadly. So what snacks should you never feed your dog and which foods are best locked away from your cat? Well, stick around to learn about the top 10 deadly food for our pets. <coughs> Hi, I'm Dr Alex Avery from OurPetsHealth.com, helping you and your pet to live healthier, happier lives. We often love to share our food with our pets, but stop and think again, is this actually safe? And which food should we avoid giving our cats and dogs? If your pet eats any of these things, then the best thing to do is to get advice straight away from your local vet. Don't wait until they're developing problems, because by then it could be too late. Better still, avoid giving them to your pet in the first place. Don't leave them lying around and make sure they are stored away safely in cupboards. Right, so let's start the top 10 list of poisonous food for cats and dogs with a bonus number 11 at the end. At number one is probably the most common poisoning seen at the vet clinic, but thankfully not the most dangerous. Chocolate. It is irresistible to us and also our pets who will often break into a cupboard or climb a shelf before consuming a whole box of chocolates. Christmas and Easter are understandably the peak times for this to happen. Now what happens next really depends on the size of your pet, the type of chocolate involved. And it's fairly obvious that the larger the dog, the more they have to eat to get sick. But did you know that chocolate type also plays a huge role? Now this is because different types contain different amounts of the poisonous ingredient theobromide. Generally the posher or more expensive the chocolate, the worse the problem. And chocolate for cooking is even worse. White chocolate contains tiny levels. Milk chocolate contains more and dark chocolate, cooking chocolate and cocoa powder contain very large amounts of theobromine in comparison. So clearly the danger is worse for our smaller dogs, especially if they get into a dark chocolate. A five kilo or 11 pound dog would only need to eat around 15 grams or half an ounce of dark chocolate to start suffering from signs of poisoning. Now this is not very much. If it was milk chocolate though, they're only likely to start having problems after eating 60 grams or over two ounces. A 30 kilo or 66 pound Labrador though, would need to eat 360 grams or 12 ounces of milk chocolate or 90 grams or a little over three ounces of dark chocolate before showing signs of poisoning. Chocolate toxicity causes problems ranging from vomiting and diarrhea through to heart arrhythmias, bloating, tremor, seizures and death. Thankfully, most dog owners are very aware of the dangers of chocolate and severe untreated poisoning is thankfully rare. In most cases, a quick trip to the vet to make them sick is all that is required. But if they ate the chocolate more than a few hours previously or they ate a very large amount above the toxic dose, then they may need hospitalization for closer monitoring and treatment. Cats are also affected, but as they are unable to taste sweet things, they don't tend to be too fussed by chocolate and so generally leave it well alone. In no particular order, at number two on our list of poisonous foods is grapes and raisins. Now this is less clear cut than chocolate for several reasons. And the first is that no one knows exactly what it is in the grape that causes the problem. The second is that not every animal is equally affected. What we do know though is that eating grapes and raisins can cause irreversible kidney damage, resulting in death. We also know that there have been reports of some dogs eating only a small handful of grapes but still showing signs of poisoning. Now using the lowest reported toxic dose for raisins and grapes, a 10 pound or four and a half kilo dog can be poisoned by as little as 17 average sized grapes or 11 raisins. A 40 pound or 18 kilo dog would therefore need to eat 68 grapes or 44 raisins. But having said all that, there are reports of an 18 pound or just over eight kilo dog dying after eating only four to five grapes. And this is less than the supposed minimum toxic dose. The bottom line is that we don't know how many grapes or raisins will kill a dog. For some it may be a very small number, while others may need to eat a much larger amount and be completely fine. Cats again can also be affected, but as with chocolate they tend to be more selective as to what they eat. Now this presents a problem. What should we do if we know our pet has eaten grapes? Now some people will be happy to just watch their pet and if they show any signs of problems such as vomiting, diarrhea, pain, weakness, wobbliness, or if they go off their food then to seek treatment at that point. Now the problem with this is that if the kidneys are damaged, then this may be irreversible and treatment may not be able to save your pet. 
where more may have been able to have been done had they seen a vet straight away. Because the consequences are so severe, I would recommend a more risk adverse approach. If your pet has eaten more than the lowest reported toxic dose, then you should contact your vet straight away for advice. If they have eaten less than this, then there is still a highly valid argument that you should contact your vet straight away. Prompt treatment is much more likely to be successful compared to treatment after your pet is already unwell. Now this one might surprise you, but onions have the potential to be very poisonous to our dogs and cats. They lack the enzyme to properly digest them, which can lead to destruction of the body's red blood cells. And in extreme cases, this resulting anemia may cause death. Other members of the Allium family include garlic, chives and leeks, all of which can cause the same problem. Thankfully, it takes a lot to be eaten in a single sitting to cause such severe problems. A 30 pound or 14 kilo dog would need to eat about eight medium onions, although six onions would still be enough to make them very unwell. Cats, however, are much more sensitive with a standard nine pound or four kilo kitty only needing to eat 15 to 20 grams of onion for poisoning to occur. Garlic then is five times more poisonous, although a single serving of anything with a sprinkle of garlic powder is unlikely to cause problems. Again, a relatively large amount would still need to be eaten in a single sitting and the risk is relatively low. So you might think that this means there's no cause for concern. Well, unfortunately, these foods don't need to be eaten in one go. Repeated consumption of small amounts can cause exactly the same problem. Think about this for a minute if you're a garlic lover and regularly give your pet leftovers. Something else to consider is those of you giving your pet a natural garlic-based flea or worm remedy. Now, not only do they not work, they may be seriously harming your pet, especially if they get hold of a relatively small amount of onion or leek. To make matters worse, some medication can also make an animal more susceptible to the effects of onion, garlic and leek. Signs of toxicity generally take several days to occur and may include depression, bloody urine, pale or yellow gums, rapid breathing, lethargy, abdominal pain, vomiting and diarrhea. By the time you see these then your pet will already have had a significant number of their red blood cells destroyed and intensive treatment will be needed. If treatment's not given then death is a very real risk. You may not have even heard of xylitol but it is used as a sugar-free sweetener and is next on our list of poisonous food for dogs and cats. It's found in a large range of products, not just sugar-free gum, and is becoming more common. Xylitol can be found in anything from sugar-free baking, ice creams and yogurts, sugar-free sweets, gum, chocolate, some peanut butters, honeys, artificial sweeteners, various sugar-free condiments, as well as sauces and protein bars and powders. Now that's a lot of food that have the potential to be incredibly toxic. Now to make matters worse, xylitol is also found in some skincare creams and cosmetics, in toothpaste and mouthwash, in human medications and supplements, and it may even be present in some active wear clothing. Xylitol may not even be on the list of ingredients. The ingredients may instead say sugar alcohol, of which xylitol is just one possibility. Anything labeled sugar-free, natural sweeteners or no added sugars should have the ingredients double checked. So what does it do? Well, first up, it's dogs who are much more sensitive to it than cats, although there have been some reports of cats showing toxic effects too. Xylitol poisons our dogs by very rapidly dropping their blood sugar levels. This is often within 15 to 90 minutes of ingestion, although it can take about 18 hours depending exactly on what was eaten. Its effects then last for around 24 hours or longer. Xylitol eaten at even higher doses can also cause irreversible liver damage if an animal eats enough and then lives for long enough as very low blood sugar levels can lead to coma and death so they may die before liver damage occurs. Initial signs due to toxicity are due to low blood sugar which includes weakness, lethargy, incoordination and vomiting, increased breathing rate, seizures, collapse, coma and death. If liver failure occurs later, then jaundice, vomiting, diarrhea and impotence are just some things that may be seen. So how much needs to be eaten? Well, the scary thing is that only a very small amount, a 60 pound or 27 kilogram retriever would only need to eat a tiny two to three grams to cause a drop in blood sugar levels and 10 to 15 grams to cause liver failure. 
Now that's not much when you might have a 500 gram bag in the cupboard or use two cups to make a cake. There can be up to one and a half gram in a single piece of gum, which is enough to poison a 20 kilogram or 44 pound dog, and 22 grams of xylitol containing peanut butter may be more than enough to poison a 10 pound or four and a half kilo dog. For dogs, this is really poisonous stuff. The risk is very real. If there is any chance your dog has eaten something containing xylitol, take them straight to your vet. Because it works so quickly, any delay could be deadly. Macadamia nuts make every poisonous food for dogs list. In reality, they're not nearly as bad as the other food items discussed here. Like grapes, the mechanism of toxicity is not well understood. But when enough is eaten, which is about two and a half grams per kilo body weight, then a non-fatal syndrome occurs. This is characterized by vomiting, incoordination, weakness, raised body temperature, and depression. Severely affected dogs may need supportive care to prevent other problems from developing. But so long as no other complications occur, even when dogs are given over eight times this toxic dose, they all recovered within 48 hours. If you are a home baker, then this one is for you. Bread dough left to rise is a tempting snack for your pet. And when eaten, the warm stomach is an ideal environment for your, the yeast to get to work, making the dough rapidly increase in size. Now this stretches the stomach, which can block its blood supply, causing the stomach to twist or even result in significant breathing difficulties. To make matters worse, the yeast will also start to ferment and produce alcohol which causes even more problems, such as depression, weakness, disorientation, low body temperature, and yes, even death. Of course, it can be treated, but far better avoid the problem in the first place. Now, you might think that our pets should be able to eat most things that have gone off just a little bit, but there are some real risks to them if they get hold of the rubbish bin or composting waste. Now, one of these is poisoning due to mold. Molds actually produce a toxin that can start acting with only a couple of hours of being eaten, and cause nervous impairment. Common initial signs include wobbliness, incoordination, muscle tremors, a high temperature, vomiting and excessive salivation. Now this can progress to full seizures and fitting and this can even lead to death. With appropriate treatment though, thankfully most dogs recover within 24 to 48 hours uneventfully, although some may take a little bit longer until they are completely back to normal. As with a lot on this list, it is normally dogs rather than discerning cats that suffer from mold poisoning, although they can still be affected. Now we're up to number eight, and this is another item that you'll hopefully not be feeding your dog on purpose, corn cobs. While this is not a poison as such, it can have deadly results, and so it's a worthy addition to this list of dangerous foods. And the risk is actually not due to the corn itself, but rather the central cob. Now this is a size that can be swallowed but it doesn't get broken down in the stomach. And instead, the corn cob passes into the small intestine where there is a significant risk of it getting stuck and forming a complete obstruction. Now, if this happens, then prompt surgery is the only course of action to save a pet. To make matters worse, though, is the fact that a corn cob is actually very difficult to see on X-ray. And this means that an obstruction may well only be diagnosed much later than, say, a bone or a stone causing a similar blockage. And as a result, the surgery can take longer and be a little bit more risky. Okay, I know the common response to the next food item on the list. I've always given them to my dog and never had any problems. Or maybe it's what dogs would eat in the wild if they were still wolves, so don't tell me they're bad. Can you guess what I'm talking about? Yes, bones, with cooked bones being the worst type. It's true that lots of dogs may regularly enjoy a bone without any problems. Others will get nothing worse than a serious case of food poisoning. Others will get nothing worse than a painful fractured tooth. And others will get nothing worse than a piece of bone trapped across the roof of their mouth. Others will get nothing worse than the severe constipation due to the build-up of sharp bone shards that can only be cleared with an enema under an anaesthetic. And some still will get nothing worse than an intestinal obstruction that then develops a hole and they die from septic peritonitis. Oh wait, those are actually all really bad things. And yes, death is on the list. It happens. I've seen every one of these eventualities multiple times. Cut bones are worse because they tend to be more brittle and so splinter into sharp pointed fragments. Raw bones though cause the same problems, especially large weight bearing bones from cows and sheep. 
Large chunks can be swallowed and the large grinding molars can be broken. Now this topic is worth a whole video in itself, but until then, don't feed your dog bones, and if you do, then keep your fingers and toes crossed. Now finally, at number 10, we have coffee, or more specifically, caffeine. This can pose a real risk to our dogs and cats. Caffeine is, of course, not just found in coffee, but also energy drinks, caffeine pills, and tea. Um, and while caffeine may be fine for us in moderation, our pets are much more sensitive to it, with them suffering from hyperactivity, restlessness, vomiting, and a racing heart rate. This can progress to abnormal heart rhythm, tremors, seizure, and of course, death. But how much do they have to get hold of to cause problems? Now, of course, this depends on the size of our cat or dog, as well as the type of coffee. If a pet eats unused coffee grounds, then a 10 pound or four and a half kilo cat or dog would only need to potentially eat around two tablespoons of a strong variety to be toxic. For a weaker variety, this amount could increase to about five tablespoons. It's still not a huge amount, Used grounds obviously have a lot less caffeine, and so the toxic amount would be anywhere between about seven and a half to 18 tablespoons for our 10 pound pet. As we're talking about caffeine, a typical caffeine tablet contains 200 milligrams of caffeine, and it would only take three and a half to be toxic to our four and a half kilo or 10 pound pet. So imagine if they broke into a small pack of 50 tablets, that's enough to be toxic to a 65 kilogram or 150 pound dog. Okay, so that's our top 10 potentially deadly poisonous food for dogs and cats, but as promised, here is our bonus number 11. Now this is a group that includes salt, washing soda crystals, hydrogen peroxide, and anything else you may have found on the internet that may make your dog vomit. But why include these? Well, these are all stay-at-home methods that have been used to make our pets vomit, but serious harm can be done. Too much salt in itself is a severe poison and does not reliably cause vomiting. Washing soda is often confused with caustic soda with fatal consequences. Too strong a preparation of hydrogen peroxide can severely erode and burn a pet's intestine. There are also plenty of things that our pets may have eaten where we actually don't want them to vomit. These include caustic substances, petrochemicals or hydrocarbons, or sharp foreign bodies like bone shards, if a cat or dog has certain conditions too, then vomiting is generally considered too dangerous due to a risk of them breathing in the vomit into their lungs, which again can be deadly. Now these conditions might include laryngeal paralysis, reduced consciousness, and nervous problems such as tremors or seizures. There is also no point in making a dog or cat vomit if it's over two to four hours since they ate the toxic substance or if they have already vomited. So what is safe to use? Well. Cats are very difficult to make sick, and I'd strongly recommend that any cat be taken straight to the vet rather than mess around with home remedies that are less likely to work. In dogs, 3% hydrogen peroxide can be given at a dose of one teaspoon per 10 pound or four and a half kilo body weight, up to a maximum of about 50 mil. If this doesn't work, then it can be repeated after 15 minutes. If this still doesn't work, then do not give more. Your pet needs to go to the vet. And having said this, Using this method at home is much less reliable than your vet administering the prescription drug apomorphine. And so my advice would always be to contact your vet straight away and follow their advice. Finally, if you use hydrogen peroxide and it doesn't work, then you've delayed your dog's treatment by at least 30 minutes, which may be critical. It's also worth considering that even though your pet may look like they have vomited everything, in fact, only about half of their stomach contents may have been expelled and so additional treatment may still be required. Okay, so I hope this video helps prevent your pet getting poisoned in the future. Prevention is always better than cure. Remember, if you have any concerns about something your dog or your cat has eaten, your vet should always be the first person you call. Don't leave comments on forums, don't ask questions here, call your vet. Having said that, if you do have any questions, comments or ideas for future videos, then please comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Also consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribe buttons to make sure you don't miss out on any future content and allow me to continue to help you and your pet live healthier, happier lives. Ourpetshealth.com, because they're family.